Welcome to Real Connection Church. Uh, this is Pastor Rodrigo, and today is June 13. And let's worship the Lord together, please. And before we continue, I would love to sing a song with you. Uh, uh, this is a, a beautiful song. It's called Here I Am to Worship. Let's uh, sing this song together, please. And I hope you are blessed today. And the Lord is with you. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that's made this heart go to glory. Hope our life stay with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. All together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. All the days for so your highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Come when you came to the earth you created, all for the sake we come to. I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You are together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I never know how much is God to see my sin. Upon the cross, I never know how much is God to see upon the cross. Amen. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say to you, are my God. You're together lovely. All together worship. All together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You are together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. To worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. Ah, man, this is a beautiful song. Uh, and we are going to uh, continue with our time for worship the Lord together here. And let's continue here. Um, Is uh, today our call to worship uh, come from Ecclesiastes chapter three verse one. 
he says, a time for everything. For everything there is a reason, a time for every activity under heaven. Well, and I would like to say, time to worship God online and time to worship God in person here in our church, in our facilities. I have a great news. We are back into have uh, in-person worship services here in our building. It's been 13 weeks since we ceased to have in-person worship service here in our beautiful facilities. And we never stopped to be in church. We have adapted to the circumstances with our online Bible studies and online worship services. And I want to thank uh, to those who faithfully support our church, following our online ministry, offering tithe and prayer. And thanks for those who came to and do work in our building to keep the facilities looking nice. We are going to have our first in-person worship service woohoo! on July 5th at 10 o'clock in the morning, only English, and 1 p.m. in the afternoon in Spanish. Stay tuned for further information about our COVID-19 policies. We want to gather in safe and a healthy environment. If you don't feel comfortable to come in person services, please continue following us through our online ministry. Today, I just wanna thank you again for your support to our ministry through uh, our online uh, services, for being faithful with your tithe and offering. And I pray God all day to say, God bless those who are faithfully are tied to the church because that make us possible to continue doing ministry here in our town. Uh, let's pray before we do the sermon today. Thanks God, we are here together through this uh, beautiful technology that you gave us, us to spread the gospel all around the world. Bless those who are connected with me here through the internet and bless their families and bless their lives, Lord, and anointed them with your Holy Spirit and in order that they can have abundant life like you want for every believer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's sermon a title is Do Not Be Afraid. I would like to read uh, John chapter 14, 24. It says like this, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the word gift. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. You know, the mind and the heart are two components of the human being. In Christian theology, these two are a fundamental part of the soul. Uh, the soul is who we really are. Every, every thought and emotion belong to the soul what we call heart. And God wants us to have peace in our mind and also in our heart. And in this Bible verse that we just read says, do not be afraid for nothing. Uh, the King David uh, used to say in Psalm 103 verse one, this, uh, I have two uh, uh, verses of the Bible. The NIV said this, praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. And the living translation says this, let all that I, I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. You see, according with this uh, Bible translation, does, uh, the King David call himself my soul, my heart, my all being. In other words, we are we are souls with body. We be brave and live because God has blowed blow us uh, the spiritual breath of life. In other words, we are a soul with a body, which God just blow into our life, our body, and we have life. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, remember this. This is, then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed them into his nostril, the breath of life. And then and the, and the man became 
our living being. You know, we live because God gave us the uh, breath of life in our bodies, but who we are is really our heart, is our mind, is our soul. You know, our soul and the soul uh, have different components like mind, intellect, heart, is emotions. This is what we are. And the God purpose for the human being and for the believers is to have an abundant life. And he wants us to be free from fear. This is one of the, uh, if we want to live abundantly, we have to live without fear, you know. And fear uh, for many people has uh, uh, miss, uh, op uh, miss great opportunities in their life opportunities that never are going to repeat it again. They never come back. God doesn't want us to live in fear. Fear manifests itself in many ways, and we fear uh, different things. For example, we are afraid to forget sometimes. We fear about the future, what the future can, uh, will brought tomorrow. Fear of meeting with God someday. Living in fear is not the way that God wants us to live. You know, we have to remember what the Bible said about this. Always remember, if you consider yourself as a Christian who loves God, you must not live in fear. This is what the Bible tells us about this subject. This is 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And just because we are a believer, we need to be like Jesus. And Jesus, one way that he showed his fear was uh, not afraid to stop hating. Jesus did not hate anyone. Actually, the word of God said in John chapter uh, 3.16, that God loved the whole world that he sent his son to die on the cross for everyone. You know, uh, living and hey, uh, hating others is not the way that God wants us to live. That's why we have, we don't have to be afraid to stop hating. Hate is a synonymous of hostility, resentment, which generates a feelings of deep enmity and rejection that leads to evil toward a person or desire to confront it. Hate produce destructive and dangerous consequences, especially physical, psychological, verbal, or even death. You know, the main crimes by hatred are those who are committed to a social group with certain characteristics, such as a victim of racism, homophobic, xenophobic, ethnocentrism, religious intolerance, and among all others. Always people hate those who are weak, those who are, left, those who are alone. But those who claim to be a believer, they should not hate other people. We should be uh, people who embrace other people who love. And we don't have to be afraid to stop hating people. First John chapter 420 said this, whoever claims, claims to love God, yet hate a brother or sister is a liar. I'm not saying this, this is the word of God said, whoever claims to be uh, uh, love God, yet hate a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister who they sin, cannot love God who they have no sin. This is a, 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 a bell calling by God, clink, 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 and hey, listen. If you call it yourself a believer, you cannot hate other people. And we see the world, how the world is today. It's a, it's a chaos out there. 
Even people, uh, uh, you read the, the social media, uh, you see people claim themselves uh, a Christian using words of hate against other uh, human beings. And those who said that we are a believer, we are a Christian, we love God, should not do that. If you have hated, don't be afraid to forgive and ask for forgiveness. Hate is a very painful for both, for both the hateful person and for the hated person. Therefore, we must surrender to God and ask him to make us free from the chain of sin of hatred. And forgive uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, it was with his disciple and his disciple told him, hey, master, will you teach us how to pray? And Jesus did. He spent time uh, teaching his disciple how to pray. And, and we can uh, uh, know that prayer as the heavenly father. And we can find it in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 14. But the verse 12 said, Jesus in that prayer, and forgive our debts as we also forgiving our debtor. This is God calling us to forgive. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, here is the Lord teaching the multitude about how they, uh, we have to behave in our spiritual life and not be afraid to forgive. You know, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, the God, uh, the Lord Jesus has a nice illustrated say this. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there and in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. And then come and offer your gift. So, don't be afraid to forgive. Who has discriminated against you, who has offended you, who hurt you, to be free. Don't be afraid to forgive. Don't live in the chains of the pain. And God wants us to live in abundance life. And abundance life is free of hate. Don't be afraid to forgive and give forgiven. While you forgive, don't be afraid to love. This is how we show that we love God and that we truly are a Christian. You know, uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. I want to read it slowly, and then we can uh, process what God wants to teach us through this uh, uh, verses. First said, you have heard that it is was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is the way that uh, the, the world lives. You know, if you, if you do something bad to me, I'm going to give you words. Uh, that's why it's too many words out there, too many people, uh, you know, uh, they are not in good, a good relationship because uh, because of this, they want to repay people bad with bad. God is not calling us to do that. And verse 44 said this, But I tell you, you love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Wow! This is powerful, but also hard to do. Love your enemy and pray for those who persecuted you. Yes, it's difficult. That's why we need uh, the Holy Spirit to anointing us to have the power to be obeyed to the Lord and start forgiving. Because forgiving others is not about emotions, it's not about feelings, it's about obeying that God commands. Verse 45 said, That you may be children of your Father in heaven. He caused his Son to rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collector doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. 
See, we show our love for God when we start loving others. We should not be afraid to love. We should not be afraid to forgive. When we forgive others, we look more like Jesus Christ. We learn to not be afraid to forgive and love our enemy, then we are not afraid for the future. The future will not be uncertain and painful. The future will be full of hope and a spirit of peace. See, I hear people saying, oh, there is nothing in the future. Oh, there is nothing good about this. You know, because their heart is not pure. When we start living as the Lord teach us to live and it is in peace, forgiving others, we start looking at the future in different eyes. We start looking at the future with the eyes of the Lord. And the future that God made for us is a, good, a future of success. This is the, the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. Plans of successful, not to be defeated. You know, this is great. But we need to be obeyed, obedient to the Lord. And I know this is not easy task. That's why the Lord uh, has promised for us that he never leave us alone in this task. Isaiah 41, 10 says, So do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Will strengthen you and help you. I will upon you with my righteous hands. See, the Lord will sustain you with his right hands. The Lord will give you the strength that you need to do what is right. And what is right is live in peace. And that is hard. And we live in a, in a world which not a, like it looks like a world. But even in that dark moments, God is helping us to obey him and start loving each other. Psalms 23, 4 said this, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear not evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. I know people sometimes be cruel. People is, uh, they enjoy it do what is bad and painful. But I think it, there is more joy being like the Lord. And learn to forgive is something to release us from all that burning that of guilty and pain that I forgive that uh, uh, you know the pain and the love that not forgive other can be. God wants us to be free. Let this left behind and you start walking to the future with God in our heart, and you start living and loving other people. You know, the Lord gives some words to Moses in order to give it to uh, Joshua because he knows that he's going to be, uh, he's going to uh, inherit the, the honey, the, the holy land, with the Bible described like a honey and milk. But the Lord knows that that was an easy task. He's going to fight to get that blessing. And God is, is uh, God knows that we have uh, battles every day, that we had to fight against our feelings and emotions. And one of those that hates uh, others. Somehow in our lives, in some moments, we do that. And, and, and the Lord knows that. And, and it's hard to forget. But that's why he said this. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, if we go to the path of forgiveness, God will be with us. If we go to the path of peace, God will be with us. If God, if we decide to go to the path of uh, forgiveness, God will be with us. That's why we are not we are not alone. We are with the Lord, uh, and He will help us to live abundantly. So don't be afraid to live abundantly. There are many adversities that we affront daily, and some are afraid to serve and follow the Lord, uh, and fear to failure Him. But together as a church, we can overcome that fear. 
So do not be afraid to be active while in our congregation. Attend our worship service, serve others, evangelize, proclaim the gospel, become active in our church. Don't be afraid. We are here to love and support each other. Together, we are strong. Together, we overcome fear. You know, we call ourselves Real Connection Church, reaching beyond board reaching beyond border for Christ. And one of those borders that we need to overcome is the border of fear, of hate, and embrace, and love. You know, I am glad that you are here with me today. And I want to give you the, uh, the closing uh, blessing. My benedictions come from 2 Thessalonians chapter 316. Now, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the lord be with you this came from second thessalonians chapter 3 16. and before we finish this uh uh sermon with you i want to remind you that we are regathered here in our building july 5th july 5th at 10 o'clock we will have our English service only. And 1 p.m., we have our second service only in Spanish. Don't miss the opportunity to gather here and worship the Lord together. Just one voice, one heart, one soul to the Lord. God bless you, my brother and sister, and see you next week.